people in Russia love him. Yeah. I would I would love to talk to that guy in Russian only. Oh, I, I want I bet he would do it. You could yeah. have like a subtitled version on mm -hmm. YouTube. Because I think there's a certain way he speaks in English and there's a certain way he speaks in Russian. Right, yeah. And it's yeah. very different because he's not still not comfortable with English. So he speaks uh, like semi location. Yeah. In, in Send location. Send location. Uh, which is <laughs> which is nice for intimidation, but it's a different thing. It's a different thing. In Russian, you can be more poetic. Yeah. You can be deeper. You can be more emotional. Like he doesn't actually know how to be real and emotional in English yet. So it's it takes it's because I have the same kind of uh, leap you have to take to to be able to be open to the full human experience in another language. It's weird how you need to know the language well in order to experience the world in that language. If you had to make a judgment between the two languages, which language do you think allows you to express yourself more eloquently? So, one hundred percent, Russian is. Um, now, I'm biased a little bit, but I think a Russian is a language that is uh, more effective at communicating uh, feeling. Uh, emotion, suffering, the the way the language has evolved because it went through the 20th century, through, through the wars, through the atrocities, through all of that, I think there's something to that where the language carries the burden of the people, the the suffering of the people with it. Like uh, the, the American experiment has a different trajectory that results in a different um, language. And I would say American language is much more simplistic. So it um you can't fuck with the words as much the, the 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 way the russian language works you can adjust the words to completely change the meaning plus swearing is an art form in russia um uh, like russians swear a lot more obviously not could be but uh generally speaking russians swear a lot more than americans really and, and swearing is a much richer part of the language so are russians like american comedians basically Really? So, so what you 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 what you find when people suffer, when you go through the war, when you go through poverty, um, more people become comedians because humor is a way to escape pain. Oh. Just not. We're not talking about professional comedians. We're talking about right. You get some vodka, you get guitar, and you're just shooting the shit. Right. There's much more of that energy because there's nothing else to do. And then the laughter is one of the. Uh, only ways to deal with the absurdity of the government taking everything away from you, all those kinds of things. And so there's a natural humor to the language. There's a natural ability to, like, between the lines to communicate pain. That's why you have all the there's poets, there's uh, Dostoevsky, even, even shooting w way farther back, Tolstoy. So there, there's a history of literature being used to communicate that pain. I think Russian language is is better at doing that but there's also kind of a general culturally speaking there's an inclination to romanticize things like to be kind of philosophical i think that has to do with um the early education system in russia under the soviet union especially was such that everybody was forced to read really heavy literature early on like way early on and, and also do some like math like the 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 level of education in russia in the first five years um the first eight years le leading up to 10 is just like an order of magnitude more intense than it is in america where america catches up is the, the college and uh, america dominates the world in university education but in terms of high school uh, middle school elementary school american education is very soft it, it it doesn't really challenge people. It doesn't really push them. The Russian education system. You you read. I mean, you read all that stuff. You read Tolstoy. You you read Dostoevsky. Not only that, you have to memorize hundreds of poems. You have to. Um, there's a strictness to it where like you have to learn. Uh, at least when I was coming up, handwriting, and you can't make a single mistake. So there's an emphasis on perfection. I think China has similar kind of thing. Like this. We like you're afraid. The way I'm afraid when I go to a hard training session for jiu-jitsu, like beforehand, like fear, I was afraid going to school because there's an expectation of excellence. There's an expectation of perfection. If you suck, you're not going to, like, everybody looks down on you. And if you are excellent, everybody celebrates you. And that creates a huge amount of pressure. But when 
uh, a lot of the population does that. There's just an intellectual nature to everybody. The athletes, just everybody, the plumber, everybody in the po in the population is all of a sudden philosophical. And that, like uh, the Satya brothers uh, that are that sort of made Dagestan and Russian wrestling famous, uh, they're poetic. Uh, just th there's just a poetry. There's a romanticism. There's philosophy in the way people uh, people spoke, and I think that's connected to the language. But I'm not sure. It's like the chicken or the egg. Um, I don't know if just the language is being used in this way or the language enables that kind of communication. That does make me wonder, because I know English and Russian, how much I'm losing that I can't speak Chinese or Japanese or, or Portuguese. Mm. Like how much of the culture am I missing? 